How's it going everyone? Uh, let's see, today we're going to be checking out this RCA 5 disc uh, digital optical output CD player. Ooh! Sounds like a lot of, a lot of nothing for just a CD player. This is an RCA. Uh, RCA are not the not the greatest uh, in the world as far as quality goes, but you know they they work. So you know what the hell. Uh, as long as it works, who cares? Let's see what is uh, manufactured September uh, two thousand two. So it is a an older one. I don't see a a model anywhere. You know, we're looking at this upside down, but uh, let's see. There it is. PR 8070D or 5237HG is uh, one of those is the part number or model number, I should say, not part number. Okay. Light as a feather. There's nothing, nothing to these anymore. Uh, you can see we do get power and it says no disk and we open we open and it did and it opens a little bit and then sucks it back in come on if we pull it out we can get it to open let's see that's number one Let's see, disc two. That says disc five. Disc one. Okay, what are you doing? I hear it. Can you hear it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, first thing, I'm not even going to put a disc in it yet. Uh, first thing we need to do is see if we can get this thing to... First thing we need to do is to see if we can figure out why the door's not opening up all the way. As you can see, you, you push the button, and, uh, uh, and then it'll just take it back in because it it's hanging up and not pushing it out. And that, from experience, that's usually a belt. And now it went to two instead of that's three. Skip disc four, five, there's one. I pushed disc two and it went to five. And yeah. Boy. Okay. Let's get the cover off of this and see if we can't figure out why the the disc tray isn't coming out all the way on its own. Uh, this will be another one. If it can't be fixed, it'll go right in the dumpster. And but we can find out why it failed. So let's take a peek. Let's get the top off of it and take a peek at it and see what the hell is going on. All right, on this one, there's no screws on the side. Let me shut the power off. I think there's only going to be four, four screws on the back side here. So we can get the cover off. Uh, I forgot to, I forgot to bring a, 
a magnetic tray. I'll have to get one here in a minute. Let's see, that one's got crap in it, and so does that one over there. Other projects that's being done. Um, this one, same thing, bought it last last summer at the auction. Some of this stuff I'm working on right at the moment was all in the same same box I bought. Uh, I think this I think the the CD player came with the that Kenwood uh, turntable that we just finished up. Uh, the cassette deck that we're working on that we're waiting on parts for is that one was separate. And I do have a, a decent um, KLH receiver to take a peek at, too, when we get, get this pile of crap done, hopefully. I mean, this thing is all plastic. It does not want to come apart. Ah, it's like there's something sticky on it. Okay, may, maybe there might be. screw on either side here. I don't know if you can... Yeah, kinda. Let's see if that does it. that screw out. There is, there's something sticky. Yeah, there was something got spilled on it because it was all sticky. Okay, now we need to like a big gear I think we need to get the tray out turned it off. Ok. 
Okay, no, no belt on this one. It's this, this cog right here. This gear and arm is what um, shoves the door out, and then it'll pull it back in. See what? So something's goofy and gummy. Turn the power off that way we can see if we can't get this. Let's see if we can't figure out how to get down to this so we can get it oiled or cleaned up. Here's our little, there's the actual player. And like I said, we're not going to do nothing until after. Okay. Yeah. Got some pretty thick, heavy grease there. Just kind of looking right now to see a good plan of attack to get that, get the tray out. It should go all the way over. It is pretty stiff. Yeah, sure, now I did it. There we go. Alright, let me... Let me take a peek and see how we can get this tray out. Most of this stuff I've never... I've never had a part before, so... We'll let me see what I, we can do. Okay, after looking it over, I kind of decided that I, th I think what we'll do first is I think we will clean up some of this old grease that's on it. This one is not, there's no belt on this one. This is all driven by an arm. And I want to see if we get the, get this grease cleaned up. And, ah, man, that alcohol hurts in a dang cut. And then what we will do is put some different... Put a different type on it and see if we can't get it to move a little freer. I just just put some alcohol on my on the rag here and we'll get that cleaned up. Let's see this this that white grease, I don't know if they're if it's lithium or what after a while it does get a little a little nasty and I am using contact disc grease same thing that I use on the pinball machines on our stepper units so just plastic on plastic. So hopefully, yeah, that's not what it is anymore. Everything's plastic. Yeah, you can't can't find anything good. They don't make much good anymore. That's not plastic. Everything's plastic. 
get some on the on this big gear here and we can it'll spread itself out there, and this is the mech let me, let me get you spun around here this white piece this piece right in here that white one that's what lifts our that's what lifts our deck up and down and we need to make sure that that has ample lubrication and once we like I said once we get it get everything get some grease on it and start moving it it'll spread itself out and hopefully it will loosen and move freer in and out Like I said, I'm not afraid to, to break it. It's already broke. Doesn't work, so what are we going to do? Ruin it? I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of any of this stuff. Okay, that, it did. It went to number one. where it should push it all the way out. Okay, what are we missing? Is there actually a belt underneath or, or is this strictly direct? I find it hard to believe that a piece of crap, cheap, actually is a direct drive I'm, I think there's a I think there's a belt underneath and I'm gonna mess with this a little bit more here grease up a few more to treat to that you know some good areas and we'll see if we can Come on. All right, I'm gonna go dig up a CD and we're gonna see if if it works then we can go into it a little bit further but uh, first of all let's see if we can get it to work I wanted to see if I could get this door this tray freed up so it would move in and out freely but it uh, it's going to take a little bit more of getting into it to find out what actually drives our mechanism. 
Um, I thought it would be direct drive, but it's not. I think there's a belt underneath, and it's probably about wore out. But first, let's see if the deck's any good. Let me go round up a CD, and we'll test it out and see what happens. All right, I got a little Johnny Cash. Play. We know the deck is good. Uh, I went ahead and I played some Johnny Cash on it. And then I put in some Peter Frampton. Greatest hits and it it plays. Everything plays. Uh, I didn't fill it up to see if we could shuffle it around. We could do that afterwards. We need to figure out why this tray just does not want to cooperate with us. Hangs up there and I can hear the motor running so I'm still thinking that we got to get down under it and see if there's a belt. So let's see we have I see four screws that kind of holds the whole the whole uh, tray assembly and everything down in. Uh, yep, I killed the power, All right, so I'm not standing over here dancing around because I got shocked. I mean, 110's okay. I mean, it scares the hell out of you, but I don't feel like it right now. <laughs> Oh shit, now I'm gonna have that stuck in my head. Some Pete Frampton. Uh, now let's see. Well this is this ready. What do we got? There. Let's see. Now there's the driver. What do we got? Let's try that one. And that one. I'd like to at least get it picked up a little bit so we can see underneath of it. Man, I know it's going to be that front panel. It's going to hold us up, you watch. Let's 
Let's pull some more apart. <laughs> Let's pull it apart some more. underneath. Mm, nope, we got a clip. Let's see, clip there. Let's see. Can you see what the hell I'm doing? Hell no. Okay, I'm holding this little clip right there. And then I'm going to unhook that one maybe without breaking everything clips to see if we can't pull that away from the a little ouch bit me All right, let me let me see what I can do. You can't see what the hell I'm doing anyway. Okay, I got under it, and that that's not going to help us naturally. At least that part isn't. We can't. There, there's no belts or anything. Oh, here we go. There's no belts or anything under there. It's just uh, some more circuit boards and stuff like that. Now I want to uh, see if I can get this to release. Ouch. Oh hell, I'm going to have to turn it on. I need to get this tray to move out so maybe we can get the whole thing to get the whole tray to come up off of here with it not being hooked in the front. So we're going to get the power on. Oops. Turn it on. There we go. Okay, now, let's see if we can, see it's hooked here, <laughs> I don't think so, that tray's got to come off of there somehow, and that's where we need to get to. We need to get 
Uh -huh. Okay, there's optics right here that tell tell the machine where the where the tray is at. So now maybe we can Sure. See, we can't. We need. We need to get under this tray so we can see what the hell drives this in and out. The screwdriver slipped. I thought I broke it. Let's take a look at this side. Okay, not under there. Okay, it's right. Right there. There. Aha. There's the belt I've um, been looking for. But man, that, that belt doesn't feel that bad. I think we may Let's see. It's a little it's a little stiff. That's all pretty pretty free there. Right there is where it drives it. Drives it out and pulls it back in. Let's see if we can't pull some of this up out of here and because it looks like everywhere I greased. It doesn't, it never hit it. Yeah, let's, let's pull some of this apart and see if we need to clean it and, and lube it up so it'll, so that belt will, will spin it. I gotta watch it. I got grease on my fingers. I don't want to put grease on that belt. See that? 
it doesn't feel real bad you know like it would like it would hang hang it up but you never know so we are going to pull them all off of there and we are going to clean them all up Okay, let me get all these gears cleaned up and then we can start all over with new grease. Hopefully we can get it freed up. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to have to get a belt for it. That one, the one that's on here is pretty, pretty stiff. So I went and looked and I've got, this, this takes a square belt. Not, a, not one of those flats or, you know, a regular belt. This is actually a flat one. Or not flat, but square. A square belt. So I'm going to, I ordered, ordered some square belts. But in the meantime... We are going to get it all ready. For the belt. same screw you know so I don't have to worry about that I mean I can I lubed everything up and we can we could actually you know put the old belt on it and see if it's gonna work but I think I would I would feel better if we started out with a brand new belt and I knew there was a belt on this and this, this crap there just there's a belt on every one of these no matter what but now we know we can put a little little money into them I mean I the belt like I said is a square belt and I ordered a a variety of them. There's 40 of them that uh, come in a package, uh, different sizes for seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. So uh, I figured that that's the really the way to go. That belt doesn't slip though. Let's see. I'm gonna. I think there, there is. There's just so much drag on on this big. 
big tray. Just a lot for that little that little motor and everything to drive it. And we figured out how it comes apart, so it's not going to be that terrible. To take it back apart to put a belt. That was easy enough, huh? Yeah, well... There we go. Yeah, what do you think? You think that that did it? Oh shit! Oop, excuse me. <laughs> we need. We need that back on there so we can tell where it's at. There we go. Now. Okay. Now. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Actually, it's worse. We'll try a belt. I'm not going to hold out hope that that's going to do it, but we'll try a belt. All right, so let's wait for a belt on this one as well. Now, guess what we got? Look what we got in the mail. Belts. Uh, I couldn't find one specifically for for this CD player, so there was a, I got these on Amazon, there was a, just kind of a assortment. Uh, I think there's like two or three sizes of each. There's 40 or 50 belts in here, so uh, we'll be using them, you know, on other, on other things too. Uh, this was uh, $7.99, and, you know, even if we just, use a couple of them out of here you know it'll pay for itself but uh, you know the these are kind of a kind of a cheaper uh, cheaper CD player 
RCA is, you know, to me, I thought, you know, at one time RCA was kind of a, uh, was a better brand, but now it's kind of, kind of getting close to the bottom of the barrel as far as quality wise goes. <clears throat> I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, they work fine. Uh, just, they're all plastic. So, you know, you get what you pay for. And I think a lot of these are supposed to be, you know, like throwaways. You know, once they stop working, you just pitch them and go buy a new one. So let's get this belt changed on this and see if we can't get this uh, CD player to actually work like it should. See if we can't get the uh, the drawer to come in and out. Most of the time it's a belt, but, you know, hey, you never know. Uh, we looked at everything. We kind of greased everything up, so it... it it's pretty free, so it, a belt should should take care of it. But I'm not uh, not holding my breath. All right, now to get this uh, drawer back up out of here, when uh, you release the two tabs on either side and kind of lean this forward, so you can so you have room to get the and get this up out of here. And now we don't have to pull it completely out. We just need to get it up far enough so we can get this drawer out and oh, it's been a couple of days since I've messed with this so kind of bear with me and see if I can remember how the hell to, to get it open I may have to plug it in and hit the eject button so we can at least get it to move a little bit Unplug it. There we go. Because we can move this. Now there's two, there's notches here that you need to get that. There's one tab that has to be right in there. And we can. Move that out of the way. And there's our belt that we need to change. It's it is pretty stiff. Uh, we're gonna we'll need that so we can measure up what we need. Hopefully these are good quality belts. I'm not gonna say they are. Yeah, look at this pile of crap. Fun parts getting them back in the package then. So this is about the size we need. A little little smaller would be ideal. These are a lot smaller. These are a lot thinner belts. I don't know if this is gonna work for us or not. Yeah, throw it on the floor. Most of the time, I ought to just take and throw everything on the floor and then pick it up because that's usually where everything ends up anyway. Here's one that's a little small. God, look how thin. I 
hours. I don't think these are all about these are all the same thickness. I do not think this is going to work. And these are awful small, thin, thin wise. Well, come on. So thin, my fingers, I can't even work them. I can't believe that's going to work. That's awful small. But, hey. We can try it. Uh, I would like for them to be a little bit thicker. Okay, got the drawer <clears throat> I'll put back in. It, it is, you know, the same as taking it out, so it's <laughs> not like there was anything different. I'm going to put a couple screws in the side here to kind of make sure that this is stiff and in place. We'll give it every chance to open like it should. We don't want it binding up on anything. Okay, now let's plug it in and see, see if those belts are actually going to work. I'm not. Oop. I turned it on. Yep. I'm not holding my breath. Okay. Power on. No disc. All right. Let's see what happens. Well, what do you know? All right, now, I'm thinking that when I took this the tray out, when I took this off, I may have gotten it out of time. Let's Yeah, okay, disc two. Okay, well it says no disc. I'm wondering if it won't. Let's tell you what I'm going to do. I think when you put it in, it should go right straight. When it goes in, it should go around to disc number one. Now how it would determine, oh yeah it is. There's these little pins here. Disc one, two, three, four, and five. And there's a little eye. Let's see, should be right here. There's a little eye that counts and determines what disc it is on. So I'm going to move that to put number one back there on the at the drive at the yeah at the player <laughs> yeah 
and, and when we open it one should be out front. Three. Number one. And it went to number five. But, okay. We open it. Number five. Okay, if we hit disc one. It goes to number five and plays. But, uh, I think, like I said, when I took this out the first time, I think I screwed up when I put it back in. So let's, now it's on five. Let's move this. That's five. Let's move it to number one. Put one in the back. Come on, fingers. Okay, that still goes to number five out front. Now if we hit disc one, put one in the back, runs it around, do 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 do, and still to number five. Okay, so uh, I don't think there's really any timing to it unless you need to have a disc in it. Let's let's grab a disc. That's empty. that and disk one. Okay, it picked that up. And see it still went to number five. We had it playing. Always to number five. Okay, let me let me mess around with this and see if I can figure out what's going on now since we had it apart and screwed it up. Well, it was uh, pretty simple to figure out what I did wrong. Uh, I put a DVD in instead of a CD. And now... Imagine that, it'll play a CD and not a, not a DVD, because this is just for music. Alright, so now we, we figured that out. Now, I, we need to load a couple more CDs in this and see if it okay that's number one we'll skip it go to number 
two. And we'll skip it. And go to number three. Okay, at least three, anyway. Go back to one. And it'll play the last one you put in. Let's skip. Okay, it'll play that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's see if we can go right to number three. Yep. Okay, it wouldn't do it because there was no disc in it, and it's reading that the. <laughs> All right. So now we got it, everything working, and. Look what I found. I thought I had gotten the, uh, the remote for this. Uh, at least this is one that's programmed for it anyway. Skip disk. Skip disk. Skip disk. All right. I don't want that blaring again. All right, so now we know everything works on this. Now we need to get it, I'll get it all put back together and we'll get her cleaned up and it'll be ready to, ready for the, to sell. Okay, <clears throat> that's the end result, all cleaned up. We got the, got a nice remote with it and everything. And, uh, <laughs> The more I think about this one, the more I'm probably going to keep this one because I don't have a CD player to test CDs. So if it acts up, I don't. It won't bother me. But we got a. You know it. It works. I think the motor that's in it's a little underpowered tell you the truth and we'll hit play and she works <clears throat> so that's the end of this episode of an RCA five disc changer hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you and I'm not gonna play a song after this one after I'm done with this one but just because you know you see it works it's fine so until next time hope to see you on the next one see ya yeah.